Ghafir, grantor of protection. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Hamim, Allah is praiseworthy and the Lord of honor. The gradual revelation of this perfect book is from Allah, the Almighty, the All-Knowing, grantor of protection against all sins and acceptor of repentance, severe in respect of punishment and the Lord of beneficence. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but he. Towards him is the eventual return. None disputes with regard to the commandments of Allah except those who choose disbelief. Therefore, do not let their moving about and control in the land create misgivings in you. The people of Noah cried lies to our messages before these disbelievers, and so did various other groups after them. And every community strove to seize their messengers of God with a mind to destroy his mission. And they had begun arguing with him by means of false reasoning, that they might thereby refute the truth. At this, I seized them with my punishment. Behold, how terrible was my retribution as a sequel to their evil deeds. And it was in this way that the verdict of your Lord, that they shall be inmates of the fire, was confirmed against those who persisted in disbelief. Those who bear the throne of power, the angels and the prophets, and those who are around it, declare the glory of their Lord, along with extolling his name and praises. They believe in him and seek protection for those who believe, saying, Our Lord, you embrace each and everything in your mercy and knowledge, so grant protection to those who repent and follow the way shown by you and protect them from the torment of hell. Our Lord, admit them together with such of their fathers, their spouses, and their children, as are righteous and so worthy, to the gardens of eternity which you have promised to them. You indeed are the Almighty, the All-Wise. And save them from all types of evils. Indeed, you will have shown mercy to the person whom on that day you save from evils. And that, to be saved, is indeed the great achievement. Those who disbelieve will be called and told on the day of requital, Of course Allah's abhorrence of you, because of your persisting in disbelief, is greater than your own abhorrence of yourselves this day. Recall when you were called to the faith, but you refused to come to it. They will say, Our Lord, twice you have caused us to die, and twice you have given us life. We confess our sins now. Is then there a way out of the torment? They will be answered, This is because when Allah alone was called upon as one worthy to be worshipped, you rejected. But when partners were associated with him, you accepted. So the fact is established beyond doubt that this day sovereignty belongs only to Allah, the most sublime, the incomparably great. It is he who shows you signs and sends down for you provision from above for your physical and spiritual well-being. Yet none heed his revelations except one who turns to him again and again. Therefore call upon Allah being sincere to him in obedience, though the disbelievers and polytheists may be averse to it. He it is who exalts the people in ranks, Lord of the throne of power. He sends his revelation by his own command to such of his servants as he will, that he may warn humankind of the day of meeting with the Lord, the day when they will all appear in their true light, and nothing about them is ever hidden from Allah. On that day they will be asked, To whom belongs the sovereignty this day? They will reply, It belongs only to Allah, the One, the All-Dominant. This day every soul shall be requited for deeds it has accomplished. No injustice will be done this day. 
Allah's reckoning will be swift indeed. And warn these people of the day drawing nigh day by day, when the hearts will leap to their throats due to suppressed grief. The unjust will have no warm-hearted friend, nor any intercessor who will be listened to and could prevail for them on that day. He knows the treachery of the eyes, even when they commit sinful acts secretly, and what the hearts conceal. And Allah judges in all fairness, but those idols whom they call upon apart from Allah can judge nothing at all. It is Allah who is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Have they never traveled in the land that they could see how evil was the end of their predecessors? They were mightier than these in power and in respect of leaving stronger marks, monuments, etc. in the land. But Allah took them to task and destroyed them for their sins. And they had no savior from the punishment of Allah. That was because their messengers of God came to them with evident proofs but they refused to believe in them. So Allah seized them with destruction. Powerful is he and stern his retribution. And indeed, we had already sent Moses with our messages and a clear authority. Towards Pharaoh, Haman, and Korah. Yet they said, This man is a sorcerer, a great liar. So when he brought them the truth from us, they said, Go on slaying the sons of those who have believed and joined with him, and go on sparing their women folk to make them immodest. But futile are the schemes of the disbelievers, and ever bound to fail. And Pharaoh said, Leave me alone. I will kill Moses. Let him call on his Lord. I fear lest he should change your faith or cause disorder to spread in the land. On the other hand, Moses said to his people, I seek refuge in him who is my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of reckoning. And a man who was a believer and belonged to the people of Pharaoh and kept his faith hidden said, are you bent upon killing a man simply because he says, Allah alone is my Lord, while he has already brought you clear proofs from your Lord? If he is a liar, he will suffer the sad consequences of his lie. And if he is truthful, then some of the things he threatened you with are sure to befall you. Indeed, Allah does not guide to success the person who exceeds the bounds and is a great liar. O oh, my people, yours is the sovereignty today, and you dominate over the country. But who will help us and save us from the punishment of Allah if it visits us? Pharaoh said, I only point out to you that which I see and understand myself, and I guide you only to the path of rectitude. And he who had in fact believed in the faith brought by Moses said, O oh, my people, I fear lest you should encounter the like of the day of disaster which befell other parties of people of the past. And I fear lest you should meet the like of fate which followed the ways of the people of Noah and Ad and the people of Thamud and those who came after them. And Allah does not want his servants to go wrong. My people, I fear lest you should have to suffer on the day of calling one another for help in frightful distress. A day when you will retreat, turning your backs. No defender shall you have against the punishment of Allah, yet none can guide him to success, whom Allah forsakes and adjudges to be astray. And Joseph did come to you before this, with clear proofs, but you continue to be in doubt about that which he brought to you, till when he died you said, Allah will never raise a messenger after him. That is how Allah forsakes and adjudges him as having gone astray, who is a transgressor and doubter. Those who dispute concerning the messages of Allah, 
without any proof and authority having come to them from Allah to support them. This attitude of theirs is extremely abhorring to Allah and to those who believe. That is how it is. Allah sets a seal upon the heart of every arrogant and haughty person. And Pharaoh said, O Haman, build for me a lofty tower that I may find access to the means, the means of access to the heavens, so that I may have a look at the God of Moses. Indeed, I consider him to be a liar. And in this way, his own evil conduct was made fair-seeming to Pharaoh, and so he was prevented from following the right way. Yet all these schemes of Pharaoh resulted only in ruin. And he who had believed in Moses from the people of Pharaoh said, O oh, my people, follow me, and I will guide you in the way of rectitude. O oh, my people, the life of this world is but a provision of a passing nature, and the hereafter alone is the permanent home. Those who do evil will be recompensed in proportion thereto to their evil deeds. But the men and women who believe, and at the same time do righteous deeds, it is they who will enter paradise, where they will be provided for without measure. O oh my people! How strange it is with me that I call you to salvation, whereas you call me to the fire. You call me to renounce Allah and to associate with him that of which I have no knowledge, while I call you to the Almighty, the Great Protector. No doubt that what you call me to has no title to be called upon in this world, nor in the hereafter. There is no doubt that we shall all return to Allah and that the transgressors will be the inmates of the fire. So you will soon remember what I say to you by way of advice. I entrust my cause to Allah. Indeed, Allah keeps a keen watch over his servants. Thereupon Allah saved him from the evil of their plans against him and the severest of punishment befell the people of Pharaoh. Their abode is the fire. They are presented to it morning and evening. And on the day when the appointed hour comes to pass, the angels will be commanded, Put Pharaoh's people into the severest torment. And think of the time when these disbelievers will argue one with another in the fire, and the humble will say to those who sought to be great, Verily, we were your followers. Will you not then relieve us of a portion of the punishment of the fire? Those who sought to be great will say, Now we are all adjudged to suffer in it. Verily Allah has already passed his true judgment between his servants. And those in the fire will say to the keepers of Jahannam, Call to your Lord that he may relieve us of our agony for a while. These keepers will say, did not your messengers of God come to you with clear signs? They will answer, Yes, indeed. They, the keepers of Jehenna, will say, Then call yourselves and your false deities. But the call of the disbelievers will be of no avail. Be assured that we do help our messengers and those who believe in them in the present life and shall help them on the day when witnesses will stand forth to give evidence. The day when their apologies will not avail the wrongdoers, and they shall have the disapproval of Allah, and the evil abode will be their lot. And indeed we gave Moses our guidance, and made the children of Israel inherit the scripture. It was a source of guidance and served as a reminder for the possessors of pure and clear understanding. So patiently persevere. The promise of Allah is true. Ask his protection for those who committed offense against you, and declare the holiness of your Lord, along with his praise, at nightfall and in the early hours of the morning. Those who dispute regarding the messages of Allah 
without any authoritative proof having come to them from God in their support? There is nothing in their minds but an ambition for greatness to which goal they can never attain. So do not bother about them. Rather, go on seeking refuge in Allah against their mischiefs. Surely he alone is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Of course, the creation of the heavens and the earth is a greater performance than the creation of humankind, but most people do not know it. The blind and the seeing are not alike, nor are those who believe and do deeds of righteousness like the evildoers. Yet little is the heed you give. O oh, disbelievers, the hour of your destruction is about to come. There is no doubt about it, yet most people do not believe. And your Lord says, Call on me, I will answer your prayer. But those who wax too proud to worship me will surely enter Jehenna, humbled and despised. It is Allah who made for your benefit the night so that you may repose in it and the day giving light enabling you to see. Verily Allah is full of grace to humankind but most people do not give thanks. Such gracious being is Allah, your Lord, the creator of everything. There is no other, cannot be and will never be one worthy of worship but he. Whither then are you being turned away? Thus indeed were turned away those who persistently denied the messages of Allah. It is Allah who made for you the earth a resting place, and the heaven a means of protection, and physically shaped you, endowing you with special faculties of reasoning and wisdom, and perfected your shapes and faculties, making them excellent in every respect and provided you with good and pure things. Such is Allah your Lord, so blessed be Allah, Lord of the worlds. He alone is the ever-living and the fountainhead of all life. There is no other, cannot be, and will never be one worthy of worship but He. So pray to Him, being sincere to Him in obedience, saying, all true and perfect praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Say, I have of course been forbidden to worship those whom you call upon apart from Allah. How can I, since there have come to me clear proofs of their worthlessness from my Lord? And I have been justly commanded to submit myself solely to the will of the Lord of the worlds. It is he who created you from dust then from a sperm drop, then from a blood clot, then he brings you forth as an infant, then he lets you live and grow, with the result that you attain to your young age of full strength. Afterwards, it so happens that you become old, though there are some of you who are called to death earlier. Indeed, he lets you live that you may reach and complete your appointed term, and that you may refrain from evil. He it is who gives life and causes death, and when he decides a thing to be, he says to it only, Be, and it comes to be in due course. Have you not considered the case of those who dispute about the teachings of Allah, how they are being turned away from the right course? Those who cried lies to the book, and to that message with which we sent our messengers shall soon come to know the consequences of their denial. When the shackles and the chains are put round their necks, and they shall be dragged into boiling water, then they shall be burnt in the fire. It will be said to them then, Where are those false deities whom you associated with him? And worshipped them apart from Allah. They will say, they are lost to us. In fact, we never prayed to anything beside Allah before this. Thus does Allah adjudge the disbelievers to be lost. It will be said to them, That is because you exulted in the land without any justification, 
and because you behaved with vanity. Now enter the gates of Jehenna to abide therein for long. So you see how evil will be the resort of the arrogant? Patiently persevere then. Verily the promise of Allah is bound to be fulfilled. Whether we let you see descend on them in your lifetime, a part of that punishment we have promised them, or whether we cause you to die before, to us they will be brought back. And indeed, we have already sent our messengers before you. There are some of them whom we have mentioned to you, and of them there are some whom we have not mentioned to you. And it is not given to a messenger to bring a message by himself except by the leave of Allah. But when the judgment of Allah comes to pass, the issues are settled in all fairness, and it is then those who endeavor to nullify the truth suffer the loss. It is Allah who made for you the cattle so that you may ride on some of them and you obtain your food through some of them. And indeed these cattle are of much use to you and through them you satisfy other desires which rest in your hearts. You are borne on them by land and on the ships by sea. And he is showing you his signs. Which of these signs of Allah will you then deny? Have they never traveled in the land so that they could see how miserable the end of their predecessors was? They were superior to them in numbers, mightier in force, and stronger in respect of the firm marks in the land. Yet all their acquisitions were of no avail to them. And when their messengers of God came to them with clear proofs, they vainly boasted of their own partial knowledge but they were caught by the very thing which they used to treat very lightly. So when they saw our punishment, they said, We believe in Allah alone, and we reject all that we used to associate with him. But their belief was of little use to them when they have actually seen our calamity. Such is the law of Allah that has ever been in vogue in respect of his servants. It is at such times that the disbelievers suffer a loss and are reminded.